Okay. Um, today we're going to talk about minus part two. So you guys had a week to kind of maybe think a little bit about some of the things that we talked about um, last week. And now we're going to go into manas again and see what happens. Another peek into our manas. Okay. So I'll review some of the main points from last week. Then we're going to do the flash feelings exercise again. And then I'm going to show you an example of manas unhinged. I'll explain what that means. And then I'm going to tell you the story that I had prepared for last week about Vince the Valentine. Okay? And then we'll have some questions. So let's review some of the main points. One of them is that manas is one of the four parts of our mind, right? And it's not the brain. It's actually part of our subtle body. And manas is our emotional mind, okay? It's also emotionally immature. Remember I said, based on my experience, I think the average age of an adult is about seven years old emotionally. Manas runs on a binary system of like and dislike. Like and dislike. And it acts spontaneously, just like a rowdy monkey or like a baby. But manas is actually made of sattva. It's made of sattva guna. So in its natural state, it's very peaceful, like a peaceful lake here. This lake looks so peaceful, right? There's not even a ripple in it. It looks like an ice skating rink. It's so calm. So that's how our manas is, just like a blank movie screen. But all of our feelings are always getting projected onto it all the time. So that's why we don't think our mind is peaceful. We can't control our thoughts and feelings from coming. They come. We can't control like what is our next thought or what is our next feeling. But we can control how we react or how we respond to these thoughts and feelings. So we have one option, which is to react, right? We become totally absorbed, like we're watching an intense movie in our thoughts and feelings, and we react spontaneously without any deliberation. We just react like a monkey or a baby. Or we can act after deliberating, after thinking, what would be the unintended consequences of my action? Would that be a good idea for me to do that or not? You know, and then you might act. So let's move into flash feelings exercise, OK? So this time, last week, we, saw, we used our sense of sight, right? We saw 10 images, and you got your reaction. So this time, if you have it, get out your feelings wheel, get out your feelings wheel and get ready. We're going to notice your first reaction, your first feeling, you know, your gut feeling for some different sounds. OK, another sense. OK. So here we go. Everybody got your feelings wheel? You got your piece of paper? You ready to write your reactions? It might even be helpful just to close your eyes. And so if you close your eyes, you can hear better, you know, if you're just focused on the sound. OK? So three, two, one, go. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sound two. Sound four. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you?
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, those are our ten sounds. Thank you guys so much for helping with the audio. Am I okay now, Vilas, to talk? Is, the, is it working for me to talk? Okay. Okay, so just take a quick tally of the ten sounds you heard. Look at the feeling words you wrote down. See how many likes you had, how many dislikes you had. See how your manas did. <laughs> okay. So you've just experienced your manas reacting to the input from your sense of hearing. So last week we experienced our manas from our sense of sight and now from our sense of hearing. You see how quick manas reacts? I mean, it's so fast how it just, all of a sudden your heart might drop or you start laughing, or you right? It's so quick, how it, how, so volatile in a way, but also flexible, it's just moving. So you experience different sounds and some that your manas liked and some that it disliked. So notice that the nature, right? We saw like and dislike with the sense of sound. Spontaneous, very reactionary, very quick. No deliberation. It's not like, should I feel happy because that little kid was laughing? Should I feel happy or not? Should I laugh myself or not? There's no deliberation. Just like, ah, ha, 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 you know? Or if you hear the lion roaring, it's like, woo, you know? Or the, pe or the, the waves crashing, it's like, ah. Oh. So there's no, there's no like stop or pause button, no deliberation at all. It just, it just acts. I mean, it just feels. So it's very emotional. So I'm going to show you now, just take it a another step further, about manas unhinged. So when manas dislikes something, right, then the person would be angry or fearful, usually, if you dislike something. So you want to you yell, like, yell and curse if you're angry and fight, you know, or you want to like, run away, you know, that fight or flight. And some people say also freeze. But you want to do, manas has such strong reactions if you don't like something that you want to act on it. I mean, manas, is not, manas can't act, that's another part of the mind. But still, usually what you'll see when manas is unhinged, meaning like out of control, you know, that you're going to get really angry and just yell and curse, fight, or you'll get very fearful and you want to avoid or reject something or run away. Okay? <coughs> So this is a ang very angry, unhinged parrot. So basically his owner broke his cage, broke his home. He took his cage down and he started jumping on it, right? And the parrot got so pissed off and he's a talking parrot. So he just totally started cursing and yelling and everything. And if you really watch Manas, you can see how people act like that, actually. They act like the cursing, yelling parrot when they get really mad, if they, if they can't control it, you know? So there it is again. And I'm going to show you. Why is it still making the noise? I can't stop it. I can't stop it. <laughs> How do you stop it, Vilas? <laughs> I can't stop it. <laughs> Vilas, can you... Huh? Every time I pause it, I kept going, I'm so sorry. Okay, so when the parrot saw and heard, right, 
what he saw and heard got projected onto the screen of Manas. So there's the parrot you see, right? His sense of sight. He saw his owner jumping on his cage and smashing it. Right? That's where he lives. That's where he eats. That's where he does everything. And the owner took it and starts jumping on it. Right? So he saw that and he heard the loud crashing sound of his owner jumping on his cage. Those two inputs got projected. That's why I put like a little movie th screen here, like a projector type of thing. It got projected onto this blank screen of Manas, which is actually a sattvic screen, like we said. There's nothing there, you know? But it got projected onto Manas. The snapshot image, you know, or you could say a video clip, clip even, of the owner jumping on his cage, and then he, the sound of it. Did you hear the sound? It's like smashing, you know? I mean, how would you feel if somebody <laughs> took your home, a giant came and took your home, and was jumping on it? And on top of that, that's his owner and probably his best friend, you know? So how betrayed and angry would you feel if somebody, your best friend, you know, the one who fed you, who nurtured you, in front of your very eyes, took your cage and started doing that, you know? But so anyway, so the starting point of this is what he saw and what he heard, okay? Getting projected onto the screen of Manas. And in this, what I'm saying here is that the, this sattvic, you know, peaceful lake turns into Rajas real fast, right? All of a sudden it just is like... So if you look at what happened next... Oh no! <laughs> Sorry, okay, it stopped this time, it stopped, okay. Um, what the parrot thought and felt got projected onto Manas as well. Remember last time I was saying in the last class that there's external stimuli? So what he saw and he felt came in through his eyes and ears. But then there's also internal stimuli, which are your samskaras coming up. So what happens was, see over here the chitta? Babaji describes the chitta like, a, like little bubbles, uh, the samskaras like little bubbles coming up from a lake. Okay, so that's the chitta, and see how you can't see quite anything? If you didn't see those bubbles, it would just look like a clear lake, but it's not at all. There's like so many samskaras under there. And when something happens in your life, for example, in this case, what he saw and he felt, I saw what he saw and what he heard triggered some scars to come up, okay? And these some scars were feeling, you know, this parrot felt like unsafe, betrayed, scared, confused, anxious and angry. Maybe not in this life that's ever happened to him because he's a parrot, but maybe in his last life, you know, he was the owner's wife <laughs> or something and the owner beat him or something, you know, who knows. So these feelings got projected, they came up from these some scars from the chitta and they're also getting projected onto the screen of Manas. And the thoughts, sorry, the zoom thing is covering my thing, one sec. Okay, and the thoughts, the parrot was pissed off, totally pissed. So he was probably thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? You know, he's breaking my cage. This is my home. This is my safe place. So those are the thoughts and those are the feelings. So four different things are getting projected on Tamanas just from this one short little video clip, internal and external, both coming. Oops. So then the parrot acted. Right? So we, on that screen of Manas, he's got what he saw, what he heard, what he felt, and what he thought. And then he yelled and he cursed. I don't know if, I mean, you probably couldn't see it so closely, but he was on a like, little stick and he was pacing around. He's thrashing his head around. He's cursing and yelling. You know, he was really pissed off. He was doing everything he could to just like, you know, I can't believe he didn't get off and bite the owner. I don't know if his feet were stuck or something. You know, I thought I would, he would act too, you know, go peck him or bite him or something, but he didn't. So this is just to summarize, his actions were driven by two external inputs, what he saw and what he heard, and then two internal inputs, what he felt and what he thought related to that. And they made the perfect trigger to get him to react. But what happens in our normal life is we don't, we're not like walking around seeing our minds like that, right? So imagine not, we, aren't, uh, we aren't aware of what we're seeing, what we're hearing, what the samskaras are that are triggered, none of that. So we just do the behavior, and since we can't see the rest of the stuff, we just get mad at the person. I mean, this time it really was the owner's fault. I'm sorry to say, right? I mean, you should be mad at the owner for breaking your cage. But, but in general in life, when our samskaras get triggered by what we see and hear, for example, we don't realize it's samskaras, you know? We just only can see externally. You know, our eyes are going out, our ears are going out. So we think it's that person's fault instead of realizing, but he triggered a samskara that gave me thoughts and feelings that made me act in that way. I mean, for example, like just say, maybe this parrot, you know, used to be like in a past life, just say like the wife, you know, and he abused her in a last life. Maybe that was a samskara. But imagine that there was a samskara where 
you know, in a past life where it, 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 like breaking the cage was a good thing, you know, because then they were going to like melt down the metal and they were going to make like a nicer, bigger home for him, something like that. So then his memory would be like, okay, cool. Yeah, break it more. I can't wait for the guys to come and melt the metal down so I can get a bigger palace, you know? So maybe this samskara was related to like abuse from the past instead of something good from the past. So it couldn't, it could, not every parrot might react the same way. I'm kind of stretching it here, but basically not every person is going to respond the same way to the inputs. You respond differently because of your samskaras. So I'll make a real life human example to show you better. I just wanted to start with the parrot to see manas unhinged, and this is how people act who can't control their, their mind. You know, when people, you see people enraged because they don't have a lot of booty working to, to control it. Okay, so now let's do a practice. I want to practice by telling you a real life story and seeing if you can apply the concepts of manas, the characteristics, to the story. Okay, remember a while back I did it when I was reading from my book, a little part of a story, and you guys were applying the concepts? So this is a different story. It's not from my book, but it's from my life. It's a story from, that happened in my life. So let's apply the concepts, okay? So here's the manas characteristics. There's seven. There's seven. So you might want to note this down or take a little snapshot of them because I'm not going to keep this screen up when I tell the story. So one of them is we know that Manas receives inputs from the five senses, right? This blank movie screen is just receiving these inputs from the five senses. And it's also receiving inputs in, uh, internally from Chitta, these samskaras. So inputs are coming from two places under the screen of Manas. Externally by what we see, what we hear, what we smell what we taste, what we touch, and internally from our samskaras. Those are all getting dumped onto the screen of mana. Okay. Then we also know that manas is emotional from our friend the parrot. We saw that. And, we've, and you, know, you know about monkeys and babies. These are all different ways you can see emotional manas. You also know from your own experience that what we just did with hearing and what we just did with seeing last week, that manas is like and dislike, like and dislike, like and dislike. Whatever feeling is coming, you either like it or you don't like it. So it works on that binary system. So you can try, when you hear this story, to look and see if you can see that characteristic of manas as well. You also know from our friend the parrot that manas is very volatile and reactive. Right? It didn't take him long to start freaking out and cursing and yelling and Right? Very volatile and very reactive. Manas is also spontaneous. It doesn't deliberate. It doesn't think, oh, would that be a good idea if I did that? It just does it. Right? I mean, there's other parts that are helping Manas do it, but the, but the feeling comes and then there's an action real quick. I'll put it this way. Manas doesn't have the ability to deliberate. The feelings come and it doesn't have the ability to ask itself, is this a good idea? Should I do this or not? It, can't, it doesn't have that capacity. And then Imanus is emotionally immature. That's why I say Imanus is like a baby, because when you see somebody acting like a baby, you're like, oh, they're you know, 70 years old, 80 years old, 90 years old, doesn't matter how old, but if, they're, if they haven't done work on themselves, then their Imanus will be the one driving. So they can seem very emotionally immature. The body ages, but the mind, especially with all these samskars we have, that doesn't, that doesn't age doesn't have an expiration date. They'll go with you all the way to your next life unless you work on digesting them in this life. And those some scars are what get played out, the feelings right onto the screen of manas. Okay, so everybody got the characteristics down? Okay, so let's see what we can find in this story. The story of Vince the Valentine, okay? So this story is not for children, so if there's any children listening, um, it, and it contains disturbing content and adults, please take care of yourself also. If you feel like you might be triggered by hearing this, you don't have to stay and listen or you can listen until I get to a point that you don't want to hear it anymore. Please, please feel free to go. Or you can turn it off now or leave now and listen to it later when it's recorded so you can control it yourself. Pause it yourself, okay? Um, but do whatever's best for your emotional health. All right. So this is the story of Vince. He, he was one of my clients. He's an 82-year-old man. He was married for 55 years. And his wife, at the time I had met him, had died one month before. So he was feeling very sad, really lonely, and bored, 
and depressed after his wife died. I mean, his whole life he was with her. You know, that one of those couples, like, it's like half of him was her. He didn't know how to be on his own without her, you know? So he was totally just at a loss of how to live his life. And I worked for hospice at the time. And hospice, I don't know if it's popular in all countries or in, even in India, but where I worked in the United States, it's very common. And it's a place where, where people can get support when they're dying, when it, they're at the end of their life. And I was a grief counselor there. So I would work with people who were dying, and I would work with their family members, and I would work with people after they died as well. I would run grief, grief groups after their loved one died. You know, <laughs> not after they died. <laughs> That'd be really weird. <laughs> Sorry. So Vince had just lost his wife. You know, it had only been a month, so it was very fresh, you know. And um, so he joined this grief group that I was running, and it was of widows. So it was the, the, what they had in common was they all had recently lost someone in the past few months of women and men. So there was a lot of women and very few men, actually. <laughs> so Vince, you know, he felt sad because you know, he was in, the, it was Valentine's Day, actually. The this, this story happened on Valentine's Day. That's why I called it that. And in, in the U.S., that's February 14th every year. And a Valentine's Day is like a, kind of a made-up holiday, basically. I mean, maybe it's f from something legitimate. But now, you basically just go out with your partner, and you have dinner, and you give, you're supposed to give, the man's supposed to give the woman roses, that type of thing, you know, or a box of chocolates, something romantic, you know? So the grief group happened to meet on Valentine's I mean, we met every week. But it just happened to fall on Valentine's Day, one of our group meetings. And Vince had only lost his wife like a, a month before, you know. So he saw these, these four females, group participants, you know. And of course, they reminded him of his wife. They were about his wife's age, you know. And so that really triggered like very strong feelings within him. So he was flooded with memories, you know, of his wife. They, that, and they, the memories, some of them were like, you know, just remembering all their times together, all their Valentine's Days together, all their romantic times together. Um, and he felt in those memories, attached to those memories, were feelings of being loved, connected to her, being cared for, being nurtured. They were good memories, you know. But then those good memories triggered bad memories when he realized, oh my God, she's not here anymore. Like, she died. I, what am I going to do? You know, she, he felt so lonely, he felt in despair that his wife was no, no longer here. So that's kind of the backdrop of the story. And so Vince felt sad. So I'm going to pause for a minute because I've told some of the story and I, want, I know I talk fast and the story is kind of engaging potentially. So I want you to just think and take some notes on what Mana's characteristics you've heard so far. Okay, look here. Mana's characteristics. Have you heard any yet? Did, did Vince receive any inputs from his five senses? If he did, make a note. What input did he receive? Did he receive any input yet from Chitta? Did any samskaras come up for Vince yet, you think? If so, make a note. Is he being emotional yet at all? Any emotions? Do you see if there's anything he's liked or disliked yet? Has our friend Vince become reactive or volatile yet? Has he become spontaneous in any way? Has he not deliberated on anything? Have you seen in any way that he's been emotionally immature? Could you please explain the difference between volatile and spontaneous? Spontaneous could be good. Like if you're like, hey, do you want to go to Kerala with me tomorrow? I'll be like, yeah, cool. It's positive. But volatile is um, negative. Aha. So, so both mean quickly changing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. OK, and spontaneous something positively could usually, be changing? Usually. It could uh -huh. be negative, but usually it's p more positive. But volatile is definitely negative. If you're volatile, it's like, oh god, watch out. That person's like a bomb about to go off. Pressure, pressure cooker. <laughs> pressure cooker. OK, so everybody got some points down on our friend Vince? <coughs> Let's go back to the story and see what happens. Okay. 
So Vince remembered. Seeing those four female group members, Vince reminisced about the decades. Imagine decades. How many Valentine's Days he probably had? 55 Valentine's Days probably he had with her, you know? Taking his wife out for dinner on every single Valentine's Day. And all, you know, another common thing for Valentine's Day is to write a love poem. You know, maybe he wrote her a poem or he bought a card with something sweet in it. Like, he was just flooded with all these memories, you know? That's a common part of grief, actually, when once the person, oftentimes if the person's diagnosed with something and they're kind of slowly dying, you're not grieving. I mean, you could be grieving, but you're worried about what's happening that day for them. You know, you're trying to help them out or you're trying to do whatever needs to happen because they're still alive, you know, try to go and see them or care for them. But then when they die, then a lot of memories come flooding sometimes. Even in your dreams, you'll see that person sometimes. Or memories come. Sometimes you have regrets. A lot of different things happen. So Vince's wife only died a month ago, so he's getting flooded with all these memories. All these memories of her. And he remembered how his beloved's face would light up each year when he'd take her to dinner. And he'd present her with this beautiful bouquet of roses. So there's like probably one of the romantic times holding hands at the table and the roses. So Vince acted without delay. Vince sprung from his seat and approached one of the ladies at the grief group. The prettiest one, the one who looked quite similar to his deceased wife. With a twinkle in his eye, and a bold confidence in his voice, Vince asked the lovely lady if she would like to go to dinner with him on this eve of Valentine's Day. Okay? Bold, huh? Vince wasn't messing around. So now let's go back to those characteristics. We did, talked a few more times, a couple more slides now. So we'll look at these characteristics again. Any other points you could note down of what, what is Vince's manas doing? What's his manas doing? Let's see. Let's look at the story again. He remembered. <coughs> so he remembered. Right? He saw the four, me four these four members. He remembered about all these times, all these memories flashing through his mind of all their lovely times together. He remembered how his, her, his wife's face would light up when she got the roses. And then... He sprung up from his seat and he approached one of the ladies who looked quite similar to his wife, to his deceased wife. He felt confident, right? He felt confident in his voice and bold. And he asked her if she'd like to go to dinner. You got down some more characteristics of what you think Manas might be, what role Manas might be playing in these two slides? Okay. Then what happened? Oops, she rudely rejected him outright. She called me outraged and in tears to complain about Vince the Valentine. You see, this lady also had just lost her husband. And she told me, I don't even want a man in the grief group. I don't even want to look at another man. I miss my husband so much. I don't want a husband looking at me. I don't want a husband talking to me. Because usually in the world of grief counseling, at least from my experience of being a grief counselor, the men want to get married right away. They're like 55 years, anyway, I need a wife because who's going to cook, who's going to clean, and who's going to take care of me? And the women are like, I don't want a man right away. I'm grieving. You know, they're missing their, they're missing their husband. They usually bond with other women during this time and support each other. And they're, it's like a much more of a heart, to heart connection. And so they, they don't want a man around them when they're grieving. Whereas the man like wants a woman quickly. You know, like, so oftentimes I have to talk to my male <laughs> grief clients and say, okay, are you sure? Let's, like, take a breather. Let's, and they're like, no, I just, you know, they'll go online dating and just find somebody, you know. So, um, yeah, but for the women, the women don't usually do that. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's 100% true, but in general, the women are more, are more careful and cautious because they're, you know, they're having a different experience of their grief. So that's why this clash happened. You know, the woman was like, I'm sitting here in the group every week bawling about my husband. How is he so insensitive? You know, I'm remembering, she's bringing like pictures of her husband to the grief group and everything. And then he's like, hey, do you want to go to Valentine? Do you want to go out for Valentine's Day? And she's like, 
angry. She was so angry, but she was also crying because she was angry at him, but she was also crying because she missed her husband. She also wanted to be with her husband. She didn't want to be with a replace, like a cheap replacement of a random guy in a grief group, you know? She was like, hell no, you know? So that was, that's the scenario. So, you, so, so now we can't really analyze his manas here, but you could analyze hers. You can put a few notes down if you see any manas activity from her. She, she rejected him outright. She called me outraged and in tears to complain about Vince the Valentine. <laughs> so what's her manas doing? You might have an idea. <laughs> Ms. Valentine. <laughs> Vince and Valerina. <laughs> okay. So then what happened? Before I had a chance, now at this point, this was like 15 years ago, I was a, a brand new intern. It was my first job I got working as a counselor, as a grief counselor. That was my first job I ever got. So I didn't know what to do. You know, there's all these rules you have to follow at the beginning. And once you know it, you, you know how to follow them. But at the very beginning, you're not allowed to take a gift from a client. You're not allowed to, there's so many things you can't do. So I knew that it was like, I, I knew there was some problem when she complained, but I didn't know exactly what to do. But I had back-to-back -back clients, so I couldn't go ask my supervisor. So before I had a chance to get any guidance from my supervisor, Vince spontaneously stopped by my office with a dozen roses for me. <laughs> so he couldn't get the ladies in the grief group. I think he actually tried more than one. That's what I found out later on. But um, since all of those ladies rejected him, he's like, what the heck? Why don't I ask my therapist? <laughs> so he comes with a dozen red roses, and he's like, happy Valentine's Day. He didn't ask me to dinner, thank God, but he gave me the roses. So I was like, Oh, thank you. You know, I didn't know what to do. So I was new and I thought that was nice. I was like, okay, thank you. You know, on my lunch break, I told my supervisor about Vents and I asked her what I should do. She told me that I should call him and tell him I have to make a boundary. And I had to say to him, it's not okay to ask ladies out in the grief group and it's not okay to give me flowers. So I did what she said, you know? See where this is going? <laughs> so before I go any further, do you have anything here? So we, you guys got that one. How about this one? Anything here you can see about Vence's manas? Take a note down, anything in this slide. Before I had a chance to get guidance from my supervisor, Vence had spontaneously stopped by my office. He gave me a dozen red roses, I thanked Vince and met with my next clients. You see any hint of what, any manas there? Got it? Look at your characteristics again, if you can't get it. There's one little thing that might be manas, a hint towards manas. Okay. Then, for this one, this is just me talking to my supervisor, so there's nothing there. I just had to call him and tell him this, so, so I did that. Vince immediately freaked out. On the phone, he started crying. He said nobody loves him, and he's going to put it into his life. And I'm like a new intern. I'm like, what? Like, it was very disturbing. You know, I'd never had an experience like that. I didn't know. I was just following what my supervisor told me according to like ethical code of conduct, what I'm supposed to do, you know? So he was crying a lot, like very heavy sobbing, you know? And I was on the phone, I'm like, um, wait, okay. Um. And then he said, I have a gun and I have it at my head. The gun is at my head. And I said, okay, Vince, Hold on, hold on. Now, what's the problem? Like, I didn't actually have training. I didn't know what to do at this point. And I was an intern at the end of the hall. And all the way down a very long hallway was my supervisor. And so, I, but I was on like an old fashioned phone, like not on a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So I took my thing and I, I just tried to say anything to Vince. Like, hold on now, tell me what happened now. And I'm texting her. Vince has a gun to his head. 
please, like, and so she came running down the hall and she's like, what? And she's like, put on speaker. So I put him on speaker, speakerphone. And I'm like, Vance, Jackie's here. Remember Jackie? And so she was my supervisor and she knew him, you know. So she starts talking to him. And then I started talking to him. And then she actually got her phone, her cell phone, and she called, she called the police. Because when somebody says they're going to kill themselves, it's not that we can probably do very much about it other than try to keep them on the line, you know? So <clears throat> I kept him on the phone, and, and Jackie basically called the police. And she said, you know, we have a man. He has a gun to his head. We had his address, thank God, you know? And um, then she came back after she made the report, and we just g told stories and got him to tell us stories and just kept up. They told us, just keep him, keep him on the line. Don't let him get off, you know? 25 minutes. Wow. 25 minutes. We kept him on the line, you know? Just talking and, like, laughing and telling stories. And so I know this story is very gripping, but what do you think his manas was doing? That he wanted to kill himself, but he stayed on the phone with us for 25 minutes. For what's, what characters of Manas is that? There's a couple there, right? He wanted to, he, he gets on, he said that, for, wait, for, actually, let's go back. He had a gun. So first, he, okay, let's start here, right? He starts, he immediately starts crying, sobbing. Nobody loves me. Nobody I'm going to kill me. myself. So think about the characteristics of Manas that are coming up. What characteristics of Manas? Okay, and then how about this one? What characteristics of manas? And I'm putting a gun to my head. I'm going to pull the trigger. That's it. What characteristics of manas? And then this one. We kept him on the phone. What was his manas doing? He just told us he's going to kill himself. So then what happened to his manas that he can stay on the phone with us and talk with us for 25 minutes? What characteristic of manas is that? <laughs> okay. So then the police arrived, thank God. They, they arrived at the house and they told... Vince told us, we still had him on the phone, so we could hear, like, some slamming on his door. And he told us, hey, I'm not going to answer. Somebody's knocking at my door. He didn't know it was the police. We didn't say, oh, we're telling the police. You know, so he's like, somebody's at my door. I'm not answering. And we're like, oh, okay, that's weird. Someone's at your door. Hmm, who could it be, you know? Oh. And he said, uh, <laughs> we're like, yeah, don't answer, you know? And then he's like... <laughs> And then Jackie's like, well, maybe you should check and just see, like, who it is. He's like, no, I'm not answering. I'm, you know, who could it be? Nobody loves me. It's Valentine's Day. My wife's dead. These ladies all rejected me. You, you rejected me. <laughs> so, but we could hear the police knocking and pounding, you know, saying, open up, open up. And we were like, you know. <clears throat> he refused, so they beat the door down. <laughs> And we heard a scuffle. We heard them throw, we heard him going, ah! We heard him being tackled to the ground. And they handcuffed him. Put handcuffs. They put handcuffs around his wrist to keep him safe, you know? So that's, um, hold on. So we told you this part. Okay, how about this part? So when the police arrived, Vince told us, someone's at his door, but he didn't want to answer. Any characters of Manas you can see for this? Someone's at his door. How would he know someone's at his door? That's a hint. What characteristic of Manas is that? And we could hear the, we could hear the police knocking, so obviously he could too, asking him to open the door. What characteristic of Manas is that? Okay. And then he refused. When you refuse something, is that like or dislike? <laughs> right? And the police beat the door down. We heard the scuffle. They tackled him to the ground. They handcuffed him. Okay? One of the police officers got on the phone and told us, okay, we have him. 
meet us at the mental hospital. We're bringing him to a mental hospital. Here's the address. Meet us there where we'll admit, we'll admit him. So I went there with Jackie. And um, he was crying a lot. He was handcuffed. And it turns out he, he did have a loaded gun pointed at his head. Then, you know, because sometimes people will say that, and they don't really, but he actually did. They had the gun. So he, he, he didn't kill himself. He had to be there and stabilize and get on some medication and go through therapy. But um, so on this one, there's nothing too much about events in this part of it. So that's the story. I know it's a heavy story, but I wanted to think of something that you could see Manas unhinged. You saw the parrot, and this is how it looks in a human, human being, you know? It's when it's really out of control, Manas is completely out of control. There's no booty working there. When you have a very strong feeling, you know, I, a lot of people want to commit suicide when they have a very strong feeling. So that's the story of events, the Valentine. So we have some time now to answer these questions of what characteristics you observe in the story. Does anybody want to share? What characteristics of Manas, Krishna does? Do you have the mic? Yeah, something that I notice is that maybe in the beginning is like, um, I don't know, these cars, you, when, when I was child, these cars that we do like this and start to get strength and strength and strength. So what I see is that Manas start to go like one for the first characteristic, one to four, then next time one to five, <laughs> then one to six, one to seven. And once getting the level of one to seven with the emotionally ir ir irresponsible, then all the time goes to the first to seven, to the first to seven, to the first to seven. Because he was all the time having to remember no one loves me, and again, going back and again, and yeah. you know, so I see that Manax work generally all of them, and they recharge each other. So once you get emotionally immature, you will b remember again something else and increase the feeling and increase and increase something like that. I, okay. I was not this. So, but of course, yeah, they're in the sections. I think that um, in the first section, it was one to four like from receive the inputs and then the cheetah. So what I'm looking for is a very specific, I should have been clear with my directions. Tell me one very specific thing that you heard happen and one characteristic. So it should be one sentence. When he, when he was sad, that's Manas emotional. That's the answer I'm looking for. Narotam, you give it a try. It's a good analysis, Krishna Das, but I want to give everybody a chance to talk and I want to hear just real short at first. When Vince approached the lady in the grief group, yeah. he uh, didn't think about the consequences, and he didn't think Sorry, about, he, he when did he not the think group, about what the consequences. He didn't think about the consequences. Yeah, and he didn't okay. uh, put himself in uh, himself in the shoes of the lady that she was grieving, and that it wasn't appropriate. Yeah. So it yeah. would be the number six. Number six doesn't deliver it spontaneous. Right. Okay, but, good. But not not po not in a positive sense. Yeah, not in a positive. Good job. That's one. Anyone else? Yes. So first, when when he saw the ladies, this triggered his samskaras of all the <laughs> Valentine's Day and memories yeah. with his wife. And then this obviously first brought up some positive emotions, loving feelings towards his wife. But then when you know it, it changed and he realized that she's not here anymore, quickly the f feelings became negative, mm -hmm. which led him to then approach them and not think about you know, the, the results of his actions. Yeah. So let's be specific. So when he, just give me one. I think the very first one you said was? Senses, he, he, he saw yeah. the ladies. So he saw the ladies, and that meant he received input from his chitta of these some scars and the feelings, right? Yeah. Perfect. Very good. OK, Daoji, what um, do you got? I got the inputs from all the senses, maybe except the touch tell, sense. Tell one story, one specific thing. <coughs> what, what makes you say that he had an input from the senses? One specific input that he had. Oh, he was saying beautiful ladies. It reminded him of his wife. So, so the input of his sense of sight. Sense he saw of the beautiful sight, light ladies. That's the, perfect. The that's manas. Okay, yep, manas. That's manas. He We're breaking it down in a very kind of uh, mechanical okay. way right now. He liked the company of the ladies. So that's a like. Yep. Like. <laughs> but he disliked the memories he triggered. Yeah. And also got the spontaneous yeah. approaching like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Then Vince the Valentine Manas is pushing him to reenact the past. I don't know what in the list to match it with. 
Okay, so let's move to someone else. And Good, Dowdy. Miss, no, a couple more chance. things. Miss no, Dowdy, I'd like Malika to have a okay. chance. Thank you. Um, I had a, let's say, aha effect in the moment um, when you were saying that he was on the phone and he said that he wants to kill himself and then you started to engage him in some positive talk. So I, that was a very clear um, like that there was something he liked, so his mind, I mean, so Just he moved, could... Right? As soon as we're like, oh, what about this? He's like, oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like, wait, you don't want to kill yourself? You know? <laughs> like, we are 25 minutes. I wonder if he just put the gun down. You know, maybe he, I don't, you know, you, you don't know, but that's right. So he was so much dislike and all that stuff was triggered. And then we just had one little, hey, how are you? What's up? He just basically gave him a little bit of love, you know, and all of a sudden he's talking about, yeah, very good. Yeah, all of a sudden he was, you had your hand, Kamala? Do you have your microphone? No. <laughs> so he didn't like to be alone. And uh, he was acting emotionally immature, immature. So be specific. So how could you tell he didn't like to be alone? Because he was trying to find a replacement. OK. So that was dislike to be alone. And then you saw him Try trying to, to find, find a okay. replacement. And, and then that's exactly what made that lady angry, because she didn't. didn't well, yeah, don't analyze her. So okay. then what was the emotionally immature? What was yeah. something specific in the story that made you think, oh, this guy is emotionally immature. Because he didn't care about others and he was looking only about him, his need. Okay. Selfish. Selfish. Yeah. Very good. And also, do you think how he responded when we said, you know, Vince, you know, you can't ask a lady out in a grief group and you can't give your therapist flowers. Then Is that an emotionally mature response? Yeah, his response? He became angry. Yeah. So it's emotionally immature response. And, and desperate. Yes. That's right. He became angry and he said, I'm going to kill myself. It's like, so that response is not the response of an 82-year-old man. I mean, if he was emotionally mature, yeah, right? So I, get, I cannot get my toys. I yeah. break it. Yeah. Make yeah. It like yeah. Good. Vilas? Good job, Kamala. I'd like to add on what Kamala just said on the emotional immaturity. Okay. So he not only um, wanted to hurt himself, but he also wanted to punish you, right? That now I'm... You know, now I'm now I'm going to kill myself because it is your fault mm -hmm. that you did not accept the flowers mm -hmm. and that you you know set this boundary here to me. Yeah, and yeah, that's a good insight. I think that's yeah, that's that's very immature. Yeah. Also, that he then that he actually actively wanted to hurt yeah. you then yeah. for that. Yeah, good. And so instead of saying I'm really sad, this is so hard for me, and I'm lonely, instead he's like, that's it, you know, I'm gonna, you know, yeah, good. And is there somebody, I think somebody has their hand up in the group. I mean, on the Zoom, right? Sorry, Tanvi, I couldn't see you very well. It's a tiny little thing. Go ahead, Tanvi. No problem. I also wanted to add to that moment. I think in that moment he was very, or his mind was very reactive mm -hmm. in the moment. And also that, uh, I guess that about, uh, he, he received some input from his chitta in the moment when you put the boundary mm -hmm. because... I think probably he had some experiences um, before in mm -hmm. the past mm -hmm. where, uh, where somebody put him a, um, a boundary and he got, he, he, uh, he got probably angry back then again. Very you know? good. Very good, Tanvi. That's an so, excellent analysis. So now you are there mm -hmm. and doing that again and that is very, that upsets him so much. Yes. Because he must have had experiences where Either his boundaries were maybe also not accepted, mm -hmm. or other people some yeah issues around. Very there. good. <laughs> I'll add to that. That's excellent. So basically, you know how a samskar gets triggered is when there's something that mimics it in your life right now, right? So Tanvi's picking up on a very subtle point, right? Saying, "Well, this some some samskar must have been triggered to make him want to kill himself, right? Maybe some other woman must have rejected him, but let's see, was it the wife? No, I mean they've been together 55 years." and their relationship seemed pretty good. But you know what the ultimate rejection is? Death, 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 death. She wasn't purposely trying to die and leave him, but she died. So that can trigger, that can feel like me saying, no, I don't want the flowers, triggers the fact that his wife also left him. It's a no. You know, the wife is saying, no, goodbye, I'm leaving. I mean, she died. So that's already weighing, weighing so heavily on him. 
So then when the lady in the grief group said no, and then when I said no, it's just too much. They're stacking on the samskara of the wife just dying. So that was very good, Tanvi. That was the samskara. Good job. Okay. Anyone else on the Zoom? Does anybody? I can't see if it's just, I think, anybody? Purushottam. Purushottam. Yes, Purushottam Prabhu, what do you have? One sec, uh, Bhagavati, I'm going to let Purushottam go. Can you unmute it, Purushottam? Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Go ahead. He became very volatile. He was reactive. <laughs> then as soon as he was rejected by all of them, then he became very volatile. Yeah. And then become completely emotional, immature. Then he says, like a child, you know, now you don't accept me, I'm going to give up my life. Yeah, exactly. That was, you that got was it. <laughs> like a childish behavior. Very good. You got it. That's right. Good analysis. Okay, thank you. Bhagavati? Mm, she is telling that uh, she perceived that the samskar there in the present that he was experienced, um, there was a lot of uh, impotency <laughs> and a lot of attachment, and uh, that there was a lot of depression and lack of love in his like surroundings reason why he reject the world in that moment so can you, which characteristic and what is it specifically attached to once in one sentence what is which a characteristic uh, emotion, emotional 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 immature. Emotional, emotional, emotional immature number seven and what is the specific part of the story i know there's a lot of places he was but what part is she picking up on yeah, the desire of death, taking the life. Taking the life, yeah. That's a big one, isn't it? Oftentimes when people are suicidal, you know, they don't... It's actually a, a pretty selfish act. You know, you're not actually thinking of all the people that you're going to hurt, that you're going to leave behind, who have to, you know, be there without you. You're only thinking of yourself, of your pain, you know? So that's emotionally immature. Yes, Vilas. Okay, go ahead, Bhadra. Just just to, to complete the, the poll analysis, I, 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 I would like to talk about when the police arrived and they knock at the door. Oh, yeah. He, he, he was like, the, 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 the characteristic is that he was liking so much talking to you by the phone because he was getting the attention he yes. so much. One yes. that he didn't. He didn't. The, the next. The, the next characteristic is that he didn't deliver it properly. That they, the presence of the police was there, so <laughs> he decided. Like even if he, even if he it received external input of the sound, that there was somebody there yeah. knocking at the door, uh, and uh, so he he didn't deliver it properly, and he refused. He disliked. He disliked the fact to like pull being pulled pulled back to the reality that he really disliked. So Good Vatra. This is another thing that I yeah. am emotionally immature. No? This is, yeah, this is, yes, very good that you picked up on that. That's a good analysis. We didn't talk about that part yet. But you picked up on this subtle piece, right, that he was basically feeling lack of love, desperate, very heavy lack of love, right? So then he has me and Jackie on the phone with him. So that was his Valentine's date. Basically, <laughs> you know, so Vadra, you picked up on that. That was his Valentine's date. He got us being like, Vans, and tell us about this, and let's tell you about that. And we're joking and laughing. I mean, he was laughing and joking with us, you know. He wasn't sitting there crying the whole time. So that was his date. So you got it, Vadra. He didn't want to, he didn't want to get off the phone. He would dislike getting off the phone. And someone's knocking at the door. I mean, unless his wife all of a sudden came back to life. Uh, he, otherwise, why would he want to answer? He had two dates. He got two women on the call with him, you know. So yeah, you are right, Badra. That was very good. Good job. <laughs> okay, Kanta. Did you want to say something, Kanta? Yes, okay. I was uh, also thinking to tell about the uh, police. Oh. So yeah, the, for me it was also like dislike and spontaneous actions. Uh, like he spontaneously didn't want 
I, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He didn't want, he disliked, and then he didn't deliberate, you know, and then he wasn't even thinking who yeah. could be knocking. We're like, who could it be? He's like, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Basically, I've got you girls, you know? <laughs> okay. Great yeah, job, you guys. But yeah. Also, also uh, this action of giving the roses uh, to the therapist, yep. like, it is quite spontaneous. <laughs> That was very spontaneous too, that's right, and emotional. Yeah. He's like, shoot, I got rejected four times, let's keep going, maybe five, maybe five. Just <laughs> okay, great job, yeah. you guys. I hope you got a good insight into Manas tonight. Haribo, thank you.